talk to me, 1556, it, it passed the House, but not by a, a wide margin. How do you see this proceeding in the Senate? You know, it's, it's yet too early to tell if uh, President Cullerton will allow the bill to be called in the Senate. It, it did pass the House by a small margin. One of the problems um, with the legislation is it's a protection for many mayor comp employees that uh, for years under Governor Bogoyevich uh, didn't get a raise. And up until 2002, mayor comp employees were not organized. They didn't attempt to organize. There was no need for them to organize because most of them were in management positions. And the governor, not all of them, but many of them are. And in past governors, whenever uh, organized employees got a raise, they made sure that the managers got a raise as well. In 2002, Governor Bogoyevich chose not to compensate uh, the mayor comp employees or the managers like the rest of the employees. So consequently, you had employees who were coming in early, staying late, responsible for getting the job done or the work done, who were making far less than the people under them. They came in at eight and left at four. So this was a way. They then, at that point, tried to organize. Many of them did. I believe 1,900 did. They were successful. There's another approximate 1,700 that are attempting to organize. Uh, they have not been successful yet. This legislation would um, take away those who have already organized that ability. They would then become back to where they were before, and uh, the 1,700 would prevent them from organizing. Now, the disadvantage to the, those employees, and we don't know, would they revert back to what their salaries were before, which, again, is uh, far less than uh, what... Uh, people working on them are making. The politics of this are really interesting. You have a Democratic governor who wants to take away union membership from a number of people, not a traditional stance. Uh, I saw that, that Brower and Poe voted against this in Springfield. I imagine that you're not a, a big supporter right. of this. The politics of this are not what I think a lot of people would traditionally see as you know, R's, D's, unions, non-unions. It's, it's sort of a, a different bill here in Illinois. I think it's, it's like many bills, Ben, that we are faced with when people think the General Assembly only act, acts on a, votes are always partisan. It's more regionalized than it is partisan, and that's what I tell people, whether it be gun issues, whether it be pro-life issues, whether it be gay issues. It's more regionalized rather than Republican or Democrat, and this is an issue that would be a regional issue. If you represent a lot of, uh, of uh, public employees, you're going to be more inclined to do what you can to protect them. If you are in an area that has few public employees and you have private employees who are complaining that public employees have it too good, those who represent them would disagree with that, but they're in a difficult situation to a vote to protect public employees when they have private employers and employees complaining. So it's more of a regional issue rather than partisan issue. How do you see, what's the, what's the hurdle going forward? Is, are there not enough votes and so no one wants to call it, put a roll call out on something that may not happen? Is this, there's, there's always a tendency I think to, to, to assume that there is going to be a grand bargain you know, not, not a scheme, but an agreement on a number of different pieces of legislation to, to get from point A to point B. Uh, that This is not an issue that would be bargained, and this is not an issue that I think you give me this, I get that. Um, I, and, and I vividly remember legislation that was more significant uh, came up a year ago, and President Cullerton was a sponsor of the bill. There were a number of individuals who asked questions, who indicated concerns about the bill, myself included, during the debate on the floor, and President Cullerton chose to take it out of the record, and it never got voted on. That was another issue that passed overwhelmingly in the House and came to the Senate. I think we have the same situation here. This is an issue where both Republicans and Democrats support it, and both Republicans and Democrats are opposed to it. So it, it's I think that President Cullerton will be counting heads if he, if he chooses to pursue it. 
he'll only want to do so if he feels he has the votes. Is this, and this, there, there's a bit of a sub theme to this year, we talked about pension reform, there was education reform, public employees seem to be getting a lot of attention and a lot of reform. Is this the continuation in that mindset? I don't know that this is the, th no, because I don't know that, well, I guess it's a financial issue, uh, but this is more about fairness than about anything else. Um, you know, I think you could argue that the uh, education reform was fair. The uh, pension reform could be argued either way, whether it was fair or not, then new employees would be under a different pension system. But this truly is about fairness in how we treat our employees. One of the problems is if we continue down the road that was started after Governor Bogoyevich became governor in 2002 by not adequately compensating uh, managers, the AmeriComp employees, then you're going to end up having employees not wanting to be manager. They're going to want to go to rank and file where they can make more money. So it's, it's more of a fairness issue than anything else. You, one could argue that, you know, we're not likely to see another Governor Bogoyevich again. Well, we don't know that. I mean, uh, you don't know that. The next governor could be. I'm not suggesting a Governor Quinn's that way, but the next governor could be that way. So uh, it is protection for uh, the Maricomp employees, many of whom are managers. Last question on this. 95% of the state's workforce is unionized according to the office, or the numbers from Quinn's office. That seems like a lot. Uh, is, is it a problem? Does that cause problems for the state that, that, that other states wouldn't have? Is 95 too high? Is 95... You know, just it, it, the number yeah. is what it is? I don't know that I can honestly answer that. I don't know what other states allow for. So I think that if you take all those who have organized out of the bargaining unit, then you're down to 90 to 92%. So it isn't a significant difference from 95 down to something like 90 to 92%. Um, so I don't know that it makes a significant difference, and I, I, I don't know how we compare with other states. Uh, there, there's expectation that when the Senate comes back, they'll vote on this plan to cut their pay, take furlough days. Right. Is, is this something that's, that's needed, or is this, I talked to Mike Jacobs, who said, you know, this is what we've got to do to come down and look good for the voters back home. It's, it, well, look good. It's more symbolic. I mean, if you're going to ask public employees to take furlough days, then the General Assembly should be doing the same thing. We've done it over the last two years. We eliminated the, uh, uh, the escalation increase that we got to, used to get for a number of years. We took that out by, by law. That's been removed. And uh, we've all been faced with furlough days. This would be the third year in a row. This is, I mean, it's going to save, what, half a million dollars? It's not significant, but it's more of a symbolic, symbolic move. If we expect other employees to do it, then we better darn well do it as well. What, what else do you see happening when, when lawmakers come back? And, I mean, you know, there could be anything. On Wednesday, since it's a regular session day, anything could come up that was not settled during the spring session. I don't see anything other than what we've discussed here today, but... Um, you know, it could happen. We'll find out on Wednesday.